Today, I will teach you how to install Docker Desktop into your Mac computer. This tutorial video will focus on those that are not technically savvy, meaning those no-code developers, just like me, and those vibe coders that are looking to get Docker installed into their Mac computers, but they don't know how to. I will take you step-by-step step on how to get them installed, and at the end, I will cover some use cases of what you can do there will be more videos in this video series. This is just the start. And the idea is that I will teach you exactly how you can host files, websites, automations, web scraping recipes, and more locally into your own computer. Like I mentioned, this is the start of this video series. So if you have any ideas of what you would like to see in some of the subsequent videos, please let me know down in the comments below. With that being said, let me teach you exactly how you can install Docker into your Mac computer. For your first step, you would want to download the Docker desktop app from the Docker website. To do this, all you want to do is you want to go to docker.com. On their homepage, you're going to see that they have the download Docker button. You're going to hover over it and you're going to get five different options. In this case, we're downloading and the tutorial is based on the Mac version. I do not own a Windows computer, so I won't be doing a tutorial on how to do it on Windows. But if you have a de desktop, regardless of which version, whether it is a little bit older and you have an Intel chip, or if you have a newer version between the M1 and the M4 that have an Apple Silicon chip, it's going to be about the same. You're going to select which version you want to use. In my case, I have a, an Apple Silicon, so I will select Apple Silicon and the software we get downloaded into your computer. Before we continue, I want to talk about the pricing that you're going to see as you're using Docker. I personally stayed on the Docker personal plan, which is their free plan, and it includes the Docker desktop. It also includes the Docker engine and Kubernetes and the Docker Hub and the Docker Scout. We will talk a little bit more towards the end of this video of what these are and what it means to you. But I would say that for the most part, if you are going to be using Docker just to host stuff in your own computer, the personal plan should be more than enough. Of course, it will depend on how much you use you're going to be doing and whether or not you want to share these with other users within your organization. So keep that in mind. But as of right now, the free personal plan should be more than enough for you to be able to do what we're going to be talking about in the upcoming months in all the different tutorials that we are going to be producing. All right, with that out of the way, what we're going to do is we're going to open the installation that we downloaded from the internet and as you can see here, we get our software package. We're going to move it into the applications folder and it's going to start based on the installation package that I downloaded. This is 2.11 gigabytes. That's how big the file is. So just keep that in mind if you don't have a computer with a whole lot of storage, then you might run into issues. but other than that, if you have more than 256 gigabytes, I think you're on the safe side. All right. Now that we have downloaded that, what we're going to do is we're going to go to our launch pad. We're going to open Docker. It's very fine. As you can see, I'm doing it with you. I wanted to make sure that you're getting the full blown experience on to how this is going to work. So we're going to click open. We have the Docker subscription service agreement. We're going to accept it. Now we get two options here, whether we want to use the recommended settings or advanced settings. In this case, it's going to ask me to enter my computer password and I'm going to do that right now. Let's keep one letter. And Now we're going to bring this up here again. We're going to enter my email address. 
click continue. This would prompt us to enter our password. Sure. We're going to open Docker. And then we have a survey here. So for me, I system administrator side. If you are no code developer like me, probably none of them will make sense. So I will select product manager, which is the one that makes the most sense to me. And the booking images, inspect images. All right, we're going to be testing applications, data science. We're going to be learning local development and hobby projects. Think that's good enough. All right, and here we have, this is the desktop app for Docker. And now let's get a little bit more into exactly what everything is used for and how to get the most out of it. Once you are in the desktop app, what you want to do is you want to get familiarized with the left sidebar because they use language that is not common for us knockout developers or even for some developers. I ran into some posts on Reddit that some developers were talking about how Docker had named some of their sections on their app and their software different than standard language. So I cannot confirm or deny that. What I'm going to say is let's get familiarized and that way you have a better understanding. Well, the first thing that I want to bring up is images. For Docker, images just means software packages. So let's say that you want to install NAN, which is an automation software, you will go and get the NAN image installed into your Docker desktop. Or if you want to, actually, let's take a look at what is available. So uh, here I was searching for NAN, but uh, you can do a Postgres database or actually quite a few. We're, we're going to take a look here in a moment, but just for you to know, images is going to be Docker version of a software package. Now, Understanding that, what I want you to take away from the UI is that if you go to images, you're going to see the software packages, i.e. the images that you have installed into your Docker version that will appear here and that's where you're going to find them. Now, moving on, we got containers. So you install a package or an image for N8N into Docker and you run it. Every time you run it, it will create a brand new container and that containers will appear here. Whether they're running or they have been stopped, they will appear here regardless. They will just be tagged accordingly. Now, volumes is Docker's version of what I would call uh, a hybrid database. So this is where they will store the information that it extracts or the information that is relevant for the containers, but they would also store their logs and stuff like that. Now it's worth knowing that when you have your volumes here, they are linked to a container, but if you delete that container, the volume will stay there and it can be used across different containers and across different images. So if we were to establish a flow, you will have images on top. And then from there, you will have containers that are running the images and supporting those containers are going to be the volumes that are going to be storing the data or providing the data that has been stored before to the containers for it to run. So the volumes can be run across different containers and the containers will contain the images that has been downloaded into your Docker desktop app. Now with that out of the way, then we're going to take a look at some of the other um, tabs that are available here. So if you decide that you want to build your own image, this is where you will do it on the build tab. The models is a fairly new uh, feature that is still in beta and basically allows you to interact with AI models from within the Docker desktop, especially for those that, are, that can be self-hosted. There would be a video coming on how to install them and how to get the most out of it. Now the Docker dub, this is where you're going to find some of the biggest, or I should say 
all of the images that are stored on there or that can be used on the Docker desktop. And as you can see here, there is a whole lot of different images that can be stored. These are the categories, but if you open a category, so for example, for the database and storage, there are 2,500 different options. I'm going to go back. If you want to go into the machine learning and AI, there are another 2,500 options. So if they're out there, uh, most of the open source projects, they are going to be listed here. Developer tools, 2,500. Now I'm starting to wonder if this is just a static number, but you get the point. There is a whole lot of them uh, right here and you can pick. Another way that you can go about it is if you go to the Docker website, let's go here. And if you go to hub.docker.com, you can see all the repositories that are available. So let's say that uh, you want to, uh, let's see, say that you want to get NAN, you find the one that you want, you click on it. and you can install it on your desktop app or you can install it through your terminal um, by um, running this command. We're going to be talking about commands again in a different video, but I just wanted to show you about the Docker Hub website because it might be a little bit easier to use than it is on the Docker desktop app. Uh, moving on, we have Docker Scout. And basically what this is, is, is a search for vulnerabilities or issues in the images. We will do a specific video for this one because it will be too long to talk about in this video. So be on the lookout for that in the upcoming week. We got extensions similar to what you're going to find in most other IDEs or perhaps even Google Chrome. You have extensions that can add superpowers to Docker desktop. We're not going to be talking about that today. And then as Gordon is the AI assistant that allows you or that helps you do pretty much anything you can think of uh, within Docker desktop. And with this, we have reached the end of yet another video. I want to say thank you for sticking with me to the end. And I hope that this video served as a starting point in your journey on learning how to use Docker. I will be releasing many more videos throughout the following weeks and months. So please be on the lookout for that. If you're interested in getting the most out of Docker, if there's anything that you want me to cover in a future video, please let me know down in the comments below. I would love to get your opinion on it and perhaps build or record a video building exactly what you need. With that being said, thank you for watching and I hope to see you on the next video.